Hey everyone, GM. Um, I think he, he was spot on. Really the theme for today's talk is two things, right? One, experimentation, this concept that we call on-chain growth. You don't see that in a lot of wallets. Wallets are essentially almost like fintech companies or banks or like consensus-backed organizations that just have like a very, very sort of rote way to go about how they develop their products. And the other example would be on-chain communication. This is stuff that could have prevented Silicon Valley banks crises. This, this, this is stuff that could have prevented a lot of stuff that we're seeing in Web3 right now. I'm just going to be essentially chatting about what are sort of, sort of like on-chain experiments that we did that really helped us to uh, get to where we are as a wallet. And what are some of the learnings and takeaways that y'all could do for any category, whether it's a wallet, a dApp, an NFT platform, or a protocol. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Abby. I'm based in San Francisco, and I've been in Web3 for a while now, um, initially sort of working in the NFT space in 2017, founding a marketplace called DBay, um, worked in VC uh, for an AI fund, and then recently um, sort of uh, joined Zerion and the founding team, um, leading their developer success and uh, their sort of like community initiatives. So we have an API, um, uh, we have three products. One's our API that's used by some wallets that you use and you sort of, uh, you know, have installed on your phones right now. Rainbow Wallet, Uniswap Wallet, um, some of these other platforms that are fully built on our REST API interfaces. Um, we also have a wallet that we launched six months back um, that's more new, and we've crossed about 150,000 funded wallets um, sort of through these on-chain growth experiments. And then the OG product was always a wallet portfolio tracker. So it was almost like Mint or personal capital that you use for your net worth tracking, but for Web3. Um, and sort of that's the entire journey and the path that we took. Um, so, so what really started this, uh, you know, consideration for even releasing a wallet, right? There's one fact that's sort of true across the board. Wallets have the highest retention in any feature in Web3. The reason being, this is where your funds are held. It's almost like a checking account, right? So for us, we had a lot of users come to us being like, hey, the average user has connected seven wallets to the platform. So it could be their origins, it could be their rainbow wallets, their ledgers. You could actually connect your ledger via Bluetooth to our mobile app and trade on the go. So now people wanted a more convenient sort of hot wallet option to manage their portfolio, but also do that with Zerion's features built um, into, the, into the wallet. So this would be tracking all your NFTs. You know, we're the only wallet that helps you track your pull-ups, for example, across multiple chains. Being able to participate in governance right from the interface. Um, a lot of those features that we already provided to other wallets, um, that sort of brought us about this new challenge on, hey, how can we actually build these features in-house? Um, so the three pillars I'm going to talk about today, these are really ones that helped us scale from zero to you know, 150K in six months. Um, they're right there. One would be dynamic NFTs. This is a completely new bet. It's almost like an accidental experiment that started out this whole wave of like, hey, like here's this whole new like gold rush, this Cambrian explosion of NFT projects that now want to integrate with us. I'll talk about that in a bit. Then there's Web3 Social. This would be the lenses, the unstoppable domains, the sort of like forecasters, mastodons, all these kind of like the new primitive of uh, censorship resistant social platforms. And then you generally have this community gamification and monetization. We've been able to generate sustainable revenues just from monetizing our community, which is this untapped human capital in any project that a lot of projects don't know how to monetize. Um, so the first challenge, going from our DeFi only focus to capturing mainstream attention, right? We, we're at a spot where we almost had to take a big bet where currently your wallet really is just something that you don't have psychological ownership with. What we released was something called Zerion DNA. If you go to zerion.io slash DNA, um, we are now one of the top five largest uh, sort of NFT communities where each wallet you hold represents a DNA, which is almost like an avatar. And the whole concept was before, you know, chat GPT, before the AI sort of like generative space exploded, um, our thesis was you need something that tracks your on-chain footprint and the DNA is just that. So it's Something that is almost like a PFP that evolves according to the actions you make in your wallet. So if you trade more on Arbitrum, your PFP now has like a red hat as a background. If you, you know, cross over like $100,000 in your wallets, you have a certain list of generative attributes that you can add on top. And what this happened is it spurred not only this, you know, accidental discovery of like, hey, PFP projects are actually cool, but now we wanted to go from like, how do you make this a PFP club but also a club that gives you like an alpha pass into many different opportunities. And October last year, 
uh, we were reached out by Lens, we were reached out by a bunch of these projects that you know, either we're investors with or we've integrated before to essentially start providing perks to people who just downloaded Zarian Wallet because they met us or maybe they you know, connected their rainbow or they realized that you know, we help you track your DeFi, MakerDAO loans or whatnot, right? And now we went from, hey, like, we're this PFP project to a lot of communities now wanting to come to us being like, Lens was the first partnership where they'd never given out any Lens domains before, any Lens handles, and they had about, I think, 4,000 users with a closed beta. They suddenly opened access to all of like the 100,000 or so DNA holders where every DNA could now be eligible to claim a Lens. That spurred another campaign with ENS, with Unstoppable. We had a bunch of DeFi partnerships with Polygon. Essentially, we moved from this, hey, like you're, you're this PFP static project to here, you're this like actual dynamic alpha pass. And I think that really differentiated wallets as a concept. And now we have this new gold rush of like Uniswap reaching out to us being like, hey, we want to build a wallet because this is great for retention. Or we want to build a mini portfolio app because now the time and the sort of attention that you spend in a D app is so valuable than before where you'd be fine just using a D app for swapping and getting off there and you know tracking that on your spreadsheets or doing a bunch of the accounting separately with your CPA or whatnot. So we help you do all of that in one place. And I think that was a big learning here. Almost approaching this with a very experimentative mindset and um, asking and talking to your community on, hey, what's the next integration you want us to have? For now, for example, since tax season is just around the corner or almost past for most of us, Crypto Tax Calculator, the one that partnered with Coinbase, for example, they wanted to give us a special discount subsidizing that for our holders. So now we're going to a point where, you know, beyond the actual user experience, you have a lot more benefits from just using Zerion. Um, the second goal was bootstrapping Web3 Social. Um, our head of marketing, Alex, he's a genius in this, in, in the sense that he spotted the trends a lot, lot earlier. And um, what we did essentially with a lot of Web3 social platforms is um, we're the top three community uh, on um, Mirror after Coinbase and Optimism. And we're the number one uh, most followed uh, wallet on Lens. Essentially, Crypto Twitter is cool, we all hang out there, but we, need, we realize that a lot of these communities have much bigger engagement, so we're able to almost generate revenue just launching articles and you know, giveaways and sort of like teasers and explainers or whatnot on platforms like Mirror and Lens. Most recently, Neat Denver, we just hosted a house party shutting down our entire street just from like a little Lens invitation that you know, ended up getting retweeted by a bunch of people, including Stani. Um, and finally, I think the last sort of community piece was really understanding that Okay, Zers or Zerion's Zers, as we call them, they, they kind of align with our value. They're self-custodial humans. Um, we have merch that says self-custodial humans and you can claim an NFT. And we kind of bake that into how we sort of scale our product. So essentially in monetizing the community, um, people who engage with ourselves in our community calls, for example, we realized that a lot of them in alignment with the proof of attendance protocol wanted something beyond just, you know, hey, like we can claim a free pull up. So they were willing to pay us money for claiming a special pull-up, and then we gamified that with platforms like Dispatch, where you'd have on-chain trivias. If you answer the trivias correctly with gamified questions and like campaigns for people to trade and do certain actions, you could actually generate a treasury that's sustainable. So right now we're making about $6,000 per month just from our community calls, from people attending it, participating in trivias, and buying pull-ups. And it's a win-win for every player, because now you have this kind of this flywheel that you can use for any ambassador program, bounties, um, developer tooling, whatnot that you want to build on top of the product. So for us, it's being very transparent with the community on that. I think that's been a huge win there. So just sort of wrapping this whole thing up in 10 minutes, um, the, 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 the sort of brief, brief un underarching sort of uh, phenomenon here has always been you want to communicate first and execute second. You know, we're not very really hush-hush about our roadmap. If you go to roadmap.zero.io, for example, we have a full public roadmap of features we're building. Um, and we really laid up this groundwork by um, driving this narrative and essentially having an open community where we want to help wallets succeed as a space. So we, not, we don't close source any of our tooling. We help other wallets with sort of scaling their interfaces. And at the end of the day, um, we are at this moment in history where, you know, with uh, around 120 years back, uh, about this month, Tesla was inventing the radio. And I think at this point for wallets and for NFTs as like a social movement, we really have a lot of work to be done, but we've got to appreciate, you know, compared to 2017 when CryptoKitties clogged Ethereum just because it you know, was minted and a bunch of people couldn't mint it. We scaled as an ecosystem a lot more 
where now we actually have the tooling to you know experiment and do a lot more sort of uh, you know I, I guess like on-chain marketing tactics and on-chain product tactics that will help help you know any product grow to the next level. Um, so you can reach me out, reach, reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, I'm at, uh, uh, I should probably like you know drop my handle there. And this is our browser extension that we are releasing soon to take on players like MetaMask. We already had about 350,000 people sign up in the last couple of months. Uh, if you scan this QR code, you'll get a special NFT NYC. Uh, um, NFT, and you'll be able to jump the queue um, and you know start playing around with it. You'll never get hacked again with our security features. You'll be able to connect a lot more wallets with the portfolio and manage your portfolio on the go. And Thank I'm you, a user, so I can vouch for that. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>